Welcome to Think Tank, the podcast. This is Steve Adubato. Joining me in the East Main studio is Nicole Swenerton, who is a senior producer at the Caucus Educational Corporation. That's our production company. Nicole, why don't you tell folks how they can find our podcast? Sure. So to hear more Think Tank podcasts, subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple iTunes or Google Play, or visit our website at steveadubato.org. That's A-D-U-B-A-T-O. You can also follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato and on Facebook at Steve Adubato PhD to keep up with all the great things that we've been up to. Thank you, Nicole. Now, on this edition of Think Tank, the podcast, we speak to United States Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. And what's so interesting, Nicole, is that Mikey Sherrill is right in the middle of the debate, the divisiveness, the challenge that the Democratic Party has leading into 2020 as to what it's going to be. And in fact, on Think Tank, the broadcast, we actually had a forum of, of different Democrats with different points of view. Mikey Sherrill is a moderate in a party with folks like Congressman Ocasio-Cortez moving very far to the left. It's challenging. Definitely challenging. And I think one of the most interesting things about Congresswoman Sherrill is that she's in a tough district in New Jersey. She's in a district that Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez would never have won. Never. I don't think that's possible. So she's in an interesting place, and it is very telling to see where she stands on a lot of issues based on where she comes from. So let's break this down. In this podcast, in Think Tank, the podcast produced by our super producer, Lauren Gary, who's here in the studio with us, I want to make it clear that Congresswoman Sherrill takes on a lot of issues. Number one, the impeachment of Donald Trump. Should that happen? What about the question of the new green plan? What about the question of taxing Americans who are wealthier and really where the Democratic Party should be? I also asked her in this interview about her experience as a veteran. Talk to folks about exactly what she did in the United States Navy. Yes. Yeah, so Mikey Sherrill was in the Navy for 10 years, and then she eventually served as a U.S. attorney as well. So now she's serving in Congress, and she really cares about veteran services. One of the really cool things that I found out that she's focusing on is when women veterans need to go to get any type of health care, go to the VA, they need a place for their children to be during that time. So child care. finding child care for that. It's something I never thought about, and it's just an interesting thing that I found out about her and something that she cares about. Yeah, and also I want to connect uh, what Nicole just said to an initiative that we're involved in called Right From the Start NJ. Check out our website, rightfromthestartnj.org. And the reason that's important is because we asked the Congresswoman about child care and what role the federal government has in this and how it fits into her list of priorities. The other thing she talked about were SALT deductions, state and local tax deductions. In New Jersey, the highest property taxes in the nation. Now, listen, I'm not here to complain about my property taxes in Montclair, New Jersey, but I'll tell you this. Capping it at $10,000, which is part of the Trump slash Republican tax, not even plan, it's a law. Capping it at $10,000 for your state income taxes, for your local property taxes in New Jersey, First of all, the average property tax bill is a lot higher than that. Then you add the state income tax. You cap it at $10,000, a lot of people are getting the shaft. And the congresswoman talks about that. She also talks about the Gateway Tunnel real quick. Nicole, someone would say that's a New Jersey and New York issue, but the congresswoman says no. Exactly. You'll hear in the uh, upcoming interview that she says it is a national problem. The country is going to lose billions of dollars if one of these tunnels goes down without that's it. Let's a Let's make plan. it clear what we're talking about. I'm sorry for interrupting. The, this is the tunnel going? From New Jersey to New York City, and we have one working tunnel in, one working tunnel out. They are decades old and not in great shape. And her proposal and what a lot of Democrats are fighting for right now is to improve this infrastructure and build a new tunnel. And it's really necessary for our region and for the country. Yeah, gateways big, child care is huge, assault deductions, how veterans are being treated, a whole range of other issues. So this is, in fact, Think Tank, the podcast. Uh, sit back, enjoy, listen to, and be engaged by United States Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill from the 11th Congressional District. They have not voted for a Democrat in decades. And the question is, in 2020, will Congresswoman Sherrill be reelected as a Democrat or will Republicans take control again in 2020 when President Trump and some Democrat run for president? Mikey Sherrill, Think Tank, the podcast.
Welcome to Think Tank. I'm Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studios. Our honor to welcome United States Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill to Think Thanks Tank. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. How much fun are you having in the spring of 2019 as a member of Congress? It's great. Um, I have entered with one of the largest classes since Watergate, and it's been incredibly exciting. We have a class of veterans and CIFers and teachers and activists, so it has been an incredibly exciting time to enter Congress. And you have a, your background. You have how many children? I have four children. And your military service in the and United States I Navy. Was, yep, I went to the Naval Academy, and I was in the Navy for almost 10 years. I was a helicopter pilot and a Russian policy officer. And then I went on to serve again here in Newark as a U.S. attorney. <sighs> so I'm curious, right out of the box. Democratic Party. To those of us in the media and to many Americans, it, appear, it appears as if there are at least two clear wings of the party. A very progressive, some say socialist wing of the party, liberal, very liberal. And those who are more centrist, Nancy Pelosi, who you did not vote for for speaker, Joe Biden and others. Do you think or ask yourself, where do I fit? No, I know exactly where I fit. Where uh, fit? Kind of my North Star is the 11th District of New Jersey. Describe it. it it's, uh, it's like the country. We have some very conservative district areas of the district. We have some very progressive areas of the district. And then we have a lot of people that really just want to see government work want to make sure that their tax dollars are being spent wisely, that, that the things that government has to handle, large projects like the Gateway Tunnel Project or small issues like making sure uh, veterans who are going to their uh, doctor's appointments have child care, you know, all the federal issues that federal government has to handle are being handled well in Washington. Do you think, Congresswoman, that it is your job to express your views, whether it's on immigration, ICE policy, border-related issues, tax policy, a whole range of issues, the impeachment, the possible impeachment that some of your colleagues want to see happen with President Trump. Do you believe it's your view to express your opinion, your, your job to express your opinion, or to quote, unquote, classic question, you know where it's going, reflect what you believe the views are of most of your constituents? Well, I feel very well aligned with my district. And philosophically? I, philosophically, um, you know, the things that I want to fight for, the things that I think are going to make this country um, work better. I think a lot of people in my district agree. So, for example, I have broad support on issues around infrastructure, tax reform, health care. Um, go back to tax reform. Should we tax wealthier <sighs> Americans more than they're being taxed today? I think we have to revamp the entire tax program. We have to talk about- Didn't the Republicans about, do that last year? No, what the Republicans did was a sort of fly-by-night um, tax plan that many I don't think had even read. And it was not bipartisan, it was not thoughtful. Um, in fact, I think, you know, I was talking to many people who were in charge of corporations who wanted to see the corporate tax rate cut. We mm. wanna make sure our corporations are competitive all over the world. But a cut from 35 to 21, nobody was talking about that. On federal income tax. Uh, on federal oh. income tax for the corporate tax rate. Nobody was talking about that. I mean, I think, you know, 27 people would have been okay with. 25 they would have been thrilled with. 21, I mean, now we've dug this huge deficit hole. It's going to be very hard for the country to operate around. But, but Congressman, the other part of this, for New Jersey, the federal tax policy changes. The cap the $10,000 cap on what you can deduct on your state and local taxes in New Jersey. Our understanding is that New Jersey, New York, California hit the hardest. Hit the worst, yeah. Define what those federal tax cuts that the president and many Republicans in Congress are touting as great for the country. What do you believe they mean to New Jersey, or particularly your district? They're horrible for New Jersey. It's probably the number one worst thing the last Congress did to New Jersey. And, and, and I got to tell you, we're feeling the hits that just keep coming with the the lack of releasing the money for the Gateway Tunnel Project or funding the Gateway Tunnel Project. Oh, go back. You're jumping into that. I want to make sure. I want to do the tax thing. But why, tell folks why the Gateway Tunnel is not simply a New Jersey, New York issue. We have, as most people in North Jersey know, one rail tunnel into Manhattan, one rail tunnel out of Manhattan. They're over 100 years old. Um, and if just one of those tunnels goes down, we lose $16 billion, $16 billion dollars in revenue over the next four years. And that's just one tunnel. The country. So it's a na the you're saying Gateway's a national so, issue? Oh, it's a 20-state The president's saying, I'm not going to give New corner. Jersey or New York that. They didn't, I'm not saying he's saying that, but some argue that, what does he owe New York and New Jersey? They didn't vote for him and are not likely to vote for him in 2020. This isn't about New York and New Jersey. 
You know what I tell people from uh, the southern states and across the Midwest? I say, if you want New Jersey taxpayers to keep funding the economy of the United States, because, you know, if you want us to keep our economy rolling and make sure that you have rails and bridges and roads, you need to invest in the economy of North Jersey, because we pay more and get less than almost any state in the nation. We vie for that title with New York. So this is, this is the most critical financial heart of the United States of America. And if the rest of the country doesn't want to invest here, then I think they're going to see grave repercussions. Go back to the tax policy. I cut you off. I'm, I'm sorry about no, that. No, it's just. How bad? Um, you, you've said, Nicole, uh, our senior producer, what did the Congresswoman say? You said it was an attack. You said the Trump Republican tax plan was an attack on the citizens of New Jersey. It's horrible for New Jersey. It hits us worse than almost any state in the nation. Um, we already have the most amount of people leaving our state. Um, versus any state you mean leaving in the country. to go to Florida and other places leaving who have to go different to tax other structure. Places. Exactly. And 85% of the people leaving our state are between the ages of 18 and 25. That's our future right there. And so punishing us, you know, hitting us hard with a state and local tax deduction cap when we already pay so much into the federal government mm. does feel to me like a true attack on the citizens of New Jersey. Beyond fiscal issues, by the way, in the second half of this program, um, we'll be joined by um, a very prominent Republican state legislator in New Jersey, Holly Shapizi, has a different perspective on some things and may agree on some others. But that's what Think Tank is all about. But make sure you think for yourself once you listen to us. So here's what I'm curious about. Beyond the economics that you're talking about, infrastructure issues, philosophically, there are issues of pe that people perceive to be about patriotism. Congresswoman Omar has said certain things. And I've watched those speeches and try not to take them out of context. In one case, she was accused of being, of saying things that were anti-Semitic. I think she apologized. She said, quote, our relationship with Israel was, quote, all about the Benjamins. After, just recently, talked about the 9-11 attack in front of a group, the care group, C-A-I-R, check it out. She said some people did something on 9-11, and we, the rest of us, uh, she happens to be Somalian uh, by her birth, we're paying for it. Why have the Democrats not been more vociferous in their condemnation of that? It's so difficult when you're operating this time. I was very upset with those comments. I, I was in the Navy during 9-11. It's part of the reason I'm asking you. I, you know, I, I have many friends, many veterans from the Navy uh, and in the military who were activated after 9-11, who, who s decided to serve their country um, after watching this huge attack on the World Trade Towers and the Pentagon, an attack on our values, an attack against democracy, an attack against the heart of our beliefs. And so... I, I thought that when, you know, when um, Representative uh, Omar said, you know, there's certain people did certain things, she should have clarified. And but said, she never apologized. She, she never, never apologized. She never clarified. But quite frankly, what was even more offensive to me was when this president weaponized 9-11 against different members of the community. Is that what he did? He did. He did put, he just show the video and ask people to speak for themselves on it, to think for themselves? No, he, he put images of Representative Omar and the World Trade Towers falling and incited people so much that there were death threats against her. Can't Democrats and all people who care about this country condemn both acts? And I'm not saying they're proportional. It's not the debate exactly. we're having. And that's what I did. Okay. And that's the statement I put out. And I, I do, and I, I feel like that's the right place to arrive. The problem is... These things aren't always proportional, and it's very difficult to operate in this environment where people are making divisive statements, um, they're refusing to apologize for divisive statements or explain themselves, and it feels very I hate to say on both sides, I'm sorry, because it sounds like someone else is saying that, but it is on both sides. It's on both sides, and it's, it's exactly the opposite of what the people of the 11th District of New Jersey want to see. Did you get into politics in any way to get into a personal, vitriolic, negative attack on others who are around you and criticize you? No, I, I got into politics because I very much believe that everyone who serves in the Congress of the United States of America, who has taken an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America, should at their very heart be working hard for all the citizens of the United States, not working to divide us. I think our country is weaker Does when we're Does the president divided. divide us? I think the president divides us, yes. Intentionally? I think... He, I, I think he does it um, 
as to appeal to certain groups of people. I don't know his intentions, but I think he does divide us in a way that's not helpful. I think it's important that uh, we are a united front. Mm. I think it's important that we're working with our traditional allies overseas and in Europe. The New Green Deal. Congressman Ocasio-Cortez in uh, New York got a lot of attention about this. Do you believe it's realistic to do the things that she and others who support the New Green Deal are advocating, which I believe would have fossil fuel and the cars that uh, are driven because of fossil fuel, I don't know, off the road in the next X number of years, and a whole bunch of other things. Is that a realistic conversation? It, you know what? I think the conversation that we need to be having is what we're talking about in the 11th District. And, and as you may sense a theme, I really do think the 11th District of New Jersey is a great place to start leading the country from. And I'll tell you why. Because we care very deeply about the environment. We have more Superfund sites in New Jersey than anywhere else in the, in the country. We have um, the most densely populated state in the nation, mm -hmm. so we care about our open spaces. And we have some of the best opportunities in wind power and offshore wind power. But we also know that to bring carbon emissions now down, we need to keep funding our nuclear power plants right now so we don't move back to fossil fuels, that we need to come up and craft a pathway forward in green power energy. Is the other plan more, is, is the other plan too radical in your view? It, I, it's, it's about what you're focused on. I don't, I think the other plan lacks a focus on the okay. real issues and the ways we move forward. A couple minutes though. Um, Medicare for all, those who, I, a whole bunch of people running in 2020. We'll be talking about that race as well and its implications for our region, New Jersey in particular. Um, Medicare for all. I saw Bernie Sanders the other day, I believe, on a Fox um, News town meeting. And I'm not convinced I heard how to pay for this. Are you worried about how to pay for it? I have not heard how to pay for it. In fact, I have asked the head of the budget committee um, to ask, have the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, provide us what we call a score. And they don't for work Medicare for Democrats for or Republicans. They don't work for. De they are a nonpartisan organization. What's the score? We haven't seen the score. Well, then how can people say they're for Medicare for all if they don't know what it's going to cost? Unclear. <laughs> so you're not committed to it. Oh no, I, I have said quite clearly that I am going to bring health care costs down for people across this country. Um, I think right now that means supporting the Affordable Care Act. That means making sure we have pre-existing conditions covered. That makes, means making sure that people have the 10 essential benefits covered. That means looking into prescription drug costs. But unless and until I see how we're going to mm. pay for something, how we're going to move a huge portion of our economy um, into another way of providing health care and know that people are still going to be taken care of, that the costs aren't going to mm. go up and health care is going to be, you know, really good health care, then I, I don't think, I'm, I'm not comfortable moving forward that way. My last question. We're doing a series called Right From The Start NJ. The website will be up right there. What it simply is, is focusing on the needs of infants and toddlers and caregivers for them. Part of your agenda? I think how we take care of children across this country, it has always been and will always be part of my agenda. I'm I, Part of the reason, um, you know, I talk a lot about investing in our school system. I talk a lot about investing in early childhood education because a pathway into a great public school, in my mind, is one of the key ways that people can get into the middle class from any mm. background and any way of life. And so my goal, is, as I tell people, is always that Everybody's kids across this country have the same opportunities in their public school system that I had, that my husband had, and that my kids have. Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill from the 11th District, I want to thank you for being with us and your, for, for your service to our country and, frankly, for engaging. And as always, I've watched you very civil um, discourse, whether people agree or disagree is not the point, but always civil, and we thank you for that. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And also, the think tank will continue such a civil a thoughtful discussion with a state legislator in New Jersey, Holly Shapizi, who happens to be a Republican but with a very clear uh, perspective on things. Think Tank will be right back after this. Thank you, Congresswoman. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC. New Jersey Sharing Network, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ. Choose New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, NJIT, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. And by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey.